Reina, a uh, Filipino Asian fusion restaurant owned by a Filipina. Hello! the big table we have for a table of 8 to 10. Uh, we have 14 people that can fit here. Actually, this is your table for later. Ah, okay. Uh, and then we have tables of two here. So all in all, we have like 32 people every service and we do like two services a night. So there's a 7, 7.30 to 9, 9.30. And then we have a 9 or 9.30 until like the end of the night. Like you can stay till the end of the night. Okay, all right. So yeah. Let's go to the kitchen. Can we see the kitchen? Yeah, of course. Uh, so this is my business uh, partner, Cyril. Hi, Cyril. We've been working How are you? together forever. Like since uh, I moved here, basically. This is Edgar. He's one of our servers. Hi, Edgar. He's Pinoy. <laughs> and Mary Faye is our dishwasher. She's also Filipino. Oh, hello. Hello. And this is Blaze. Uh, hi, Blaze. <laughs> so this is our kitchen. Uh -huh. uh, we're getting ready for dinner service. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So it's gonna bit. be busy later. Yeah, it's gonna be super busy. What is this? What this kind is of? the Bicol Express sauce. Ah. Okay. And we have different sauces. We're actually about to have staff meal now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Dinner now for the staff before. Yeah, before it gets crazy. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. How long have you been living in Paris? I've been living here for seven years now. Almost seven years now. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, when did you start, you know, putting up a restaurant? Uh, I've been cooking for a while, even in the Philippines, but it was kind of like uh -huh. on the side. It's always okay. been my passion, but uh -huh. I was I had another job at the time, so I was doing it mostly for friends, like catering friends' dinners uh -huh. and stuff. Uh -huh. And then when I decided to quit my old career, I said, okay, I want to start taking this seriously and mm -hmm. doing this as a profession. So uh -oh. I came to Paris and this is where I started cooking professionally. Oh. And I went to school and uh -oh. then I did an internship and then I worked uh -oh. in French kitchens. Uh -oh. I started my own business that was like a parang private private chef uh -oh. and also a supper club in my apartment. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I started doing pop-ups around Paris. So it was very organic the way uh -oh. we got here. and. Um, so my partner and I always wanted to open a restaurant, um, and, but then, you know, COVID happened, so many things happened. Uh, so we kind of put that on the shelf for a while, and then 2021, I was telling him, I was like, you know, I think it's time. And people were like, you're crazy, it's, we're in the middle of the pandemic, and I was like, you know what, everything's so cheap now, and I feel like I can do it. I felt like I was ready, I felt like it was time, so we just kind of went for it. I left the Philippines 2016. 2016. So, like early 2016, I left. Uh, before that, I was uh, writing for different publications and different newspapers. Uh, so yeah, I was doing that for a very long time. So in 2016, you moved to the to Paris. Yes. Yes. And then you studied here, pa? Or yes. Uh -huh. I went to culinary school here because uh -huh. before I was self-taught, I was teaching myself how to do. It. Like I was asking friends, like friends uh, who were chefs. Uh, I was uh, googling, like everything. <laughs> I'm just like really testing. I would uh, cook dinner every single night. I would uh, rush home from work to make dinner, uh, and then you know my friends started being, oh, I'm doing a small dinner. Can you do it for us? And I wouldn't charge people. Uh, oh, huh? I'd just be like, Krabi. you pay for the cost, uh, uh, uh. and I'll do it because I just wanted to practice, kind of like earn my <laughs> title, my stripes, earn uh, my stripes uh, exactly uh, uh. before I even think of like charging for. Uh for anything. So I was uh -huh. doing everything for free. Grabe. Um, I was also like doing things, like selling things from home, like I was uh -huh. selling cupcakes, like things. I always <laughs> like to cook, but you know, I never, uh, no, not never, that's a lie. <laughs> when I was younger, I wanted to go to culinary school, but then parang pub it was that or publishing and uh -huh. publishing one. Uh -huh. So it was always kind of there, uh -huh. you know. But uh -huh. being the daughter of uh, the Jim Paredes, <laughs> Why did you go to entertainment? Well, first of all, I didn't want to go to entertainment. Really? I was just telling my, uh, one of the people in the team, I was like, man, because there's a really good song on it. I was like, so my biggest frustration is that I love to sing, but I really can't sing. And I'm a daughter of a singer. It's so ironic, but I can't. So, uh, I just went to where I was good at. <laughs> uh, what about mom? Is your mom good in cooking? 
My mom is, and so is my grandmother. Uh -huh. uh, there's, there were no professional chefs in my family mm -hmm. before my generation. So uh -huh. I have another cousin who also works in the kitchen in the U.S. Uh -huh. But before us, wala naman. But uh -huh. I think we just grew up in families that uh -huh. like to eat a lot, uh -huh. and you know, I would, I would go to my grandmother's house, and she would always be like baking something or cooking something, and uh -huh. I would just, I was very close to her, so uh -huh. I would just be sitting there and like watching her and. Yeah. You know, tasting everything. Um, and yeah. the, the recipes I have, like the way I do Pinoy food, is super not traditional. So a lot of it is based on an idea, and then uh, a lot of it is like my memories of uh, like something I've tried before and uh, mixed with something like this. And parang ganon. And a lot of it is parang I think of my grandma. Uh, so your food here, the food that you serve, is also Filipino. Yes. Filipino talaga siya. I think the roots are always going to be Filipino. Oh, but there's something, parang may fusion na siya of other yes, ano, yes. influences. I, mean, I live here in France, so uh -huh. all the produce I use is seasonal uh -huh. French, uh -huh. you know, and there's a lot of the produce that we don't have in Asia, but we have it here, and it makes sense to use it with uh -huh. certain sauces, with certain whatever, or yeah. uh -huh. if there's a certain dish that I really like the sauce, but maybe growing up I found it a little too heavy, I uh -huh. change it to something else. Uh -huh. For instance, um, I do a Bicol Express, but not with pork. I do it with seafood. Uh, okay. So I do it in the summer. I was doing it with clams. Now I have it with monkfish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or kaya I was doing a vegan kare kare, but now I'm doing a more normal kare kare. Not really normal. It's still a rib eye steak with kare kare sauce. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Um, adobo. Adobo. I do a fried chicken adobo. Fried chicken adobo. So it's like okay. fried chicken with an adobo glaze and uh -huh. garlic yogurt. So it has all the tastes of uh -huh. an adobo uh -huh. without being adobo. <laughs> but are you going to serve that tonight in yes, our dinner? Yes, okay, yes, excited to try, to try that out. You'll try also the patis wings. I have patis and uh -huh. I have adobo fried chicken. Uh -huh. uh, you'll also try the sole with bicol uh -huh. sauce. Uh -huh. uh, we have a crispy pig head. Ooh! Uh, <laughs> parang lechon pig head. Lechon, lechon, yeah. Uh, It's our Kali barbecue, it has Pinoy barbecue sauce. Uh -huh. So what you would use to base pork barbecue uh -huh. is what we use for the roasted cauliflower. Okay. And it has like a fennel, carrot, achar on the side. The first store, good, huh? Thank you. May, may ang hang siya, no? Yeah, I like spicy, so I always add a little bit. Of yeah, I mean, kick siya. Yeah. It's like, like I said earlier, really, it's mixed. A lot of it is rooted on Filipino, but I also borrow a lot from Southeast Asia since I grew up there and I traveled a lot in Southeast Asia. And even in the Philippines, you know, we get chicken rice, we get things like that. So for me, it's always been part of uh, what I do of eating. Uh -oh. Yung Reina pala, where did that come from? Why Reina? Mm, the whole place is inspired by my grandmother. But it's also for like all the women that raised me, um, my mom, uh, my titas, my older cousins, my nannies growing up, you know, like basically everything, you know, like I want to be the same kind of strong woman as they were for me. Alright, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Barbecue. It comes so cauliflower it comes with pita cheese in it. And a chara on the side. Here, here, use this. Cauliflower. It's not I, I meat. Cauliflower is in a barbecue. Fried yes. chicken adobo, with this yogurt. is what I want. Yes. And how do you call it? What do you call it? Garlic on it. Yes. Ah, garlic. So, yes, oh, garlic. That looks tasty. Sarap nito. Lasang lasa mo yung mga ano. Spices. So yummy. When you travel, uh, there will come a time when you will miss Philippine food. Diba? Yeah. Para it only takes like five days and then you'll, you'll be craving for Filipino food. Yeah. So when you go here to Reina, you, you, you'll still taste that, ano, that Filipino distinct uh, taste. Na, yes, yes, na, for sure. Uh -oh. I want to say that like a lot of the Filipinos who come here, uh -oh. uh, of course there have been a handful who are like, oh, it's not traditional. I was like, yeah, it's not. And uh -oh. I never said it was. Even yeah. on my social media, it doesn't say traditional uh -oh. at all. It's like my play on Filipino uh -oh. food. But I have to say that mm -mm. 
the other 99% of Pinoy's are just like, I love how you, you know, it still tastes like home, but yes. it's also very surprising and different oh, at the same time. I think it just needs to taste like home. Uh, 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 you know what I mean? True. Like, it doesn't have to have any strict parameters of uh, like what it's supposed to be. Uh, but as a Pinoy, like when you try it, you're, you still have to feel like, okay, I can relate to this and uh, it's something that... So yes, this is a yellow rice with fried garlic. This is our patis caramel chicken. So you can see, you can see about this, this is with Thai fur leaves. This is adobo. With with citron on it, with lime, and also with chili around it. Yes, and our Beagle Express. Ah, Our Beagle Express, this is a salt fish in crust. Yes. And that looks really good. Cocoa milk. Uh, ginger sauce yeah. and indoor. Yeah. Okay. Which is this this is like the indoor this on top of it. Yeah. Alright. So how do you find the food? Uh -huh. uh, it has a bit of it's traditional very very good uh -huh. it was my first time I tasted the uh, kare kare uh -huh. it's very 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 good uh -huh. Filipino food you like Filipino food? yeah what's your favorite? Uh, maybe uh, Sinigang Sinigang? Yeah, oh. I like Sinigang okay. Adobo Bicol Express I like Reina, one of the best restaurants in Paris and trust me, I know very well restaurants in Paris. You should enjoy this place. Yeah. I love tuna. The, the tuna, the pork. The pork head. Yeah, the pork head as well. Uh, the, uh, my, my son uh -huh. who is yes. here. What do you love? Uh, the rice. The rice. Yeah. And, and the rice. chicken. Yeah. And the chicken fries. And the chicken. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I agree with you. What do foreigners here um, like? What kind of food do they like? For like what dishes yeah. do they like? Uh, the kare kare is very popular. Kare -kare. Yes. Kare kare is very popular. Uh -huh. Bicol Express is uh -huh. very popular. Uh -huh. And so is the rendang. Uh -huh. So I do a Maranao style rendang, uh -huh. um, you know, with palapa and uh -huh. everything. So that I do it with lamb chops uh -huh. or lamb saddle. So that's usually very popular. Uh, the fried chicken, uh -huh. of course, everybody loves fried chicken. <laughs> uh -huh. But this is the adobo fried chicken. Right? It's the adobo fried chicken. That's actually our best-selling flavor. Ah, okay. Is the adobo fried chicken. Uh -huh. Kinilaw when it was summer. I stopped doing it now, uh -huh. but the whole summer I had kinilaw, white tuna kinilaw on the menu. So they really like that also. Uh -huh. Filipino dishes are not so famous as. You know, Chinese, and Thai, and so Thai yeah. Korean, but parang we're left behind. Yeah. Ano kaya yun? Anong, anong reason? Um, I, you know, I've, I've had people ask me this question before, uh -huh. and I think because like Filipino food mm -hmm. is very mixed, right? We have Chinese influence, we have Spanish, we have our own, you know, like the South Muslim, the Muslim region where their foods are very different and stuff like that. I think that um, because of this, people get confused like what is Filipino food because like, uh, I don't know, Machado is also Spanish, it's also Mexican, it's also like what is it, what is it? So I think the what you should do, or what I did at least, I'm not gonna tell anyone to do what to do, but what I did was I just found my own personal identity within Filipino food. So it's like a lot of it is like I try to introduce our palate our, pre our flavor profiles and the way we eat because it's hard to say oh this is adobo because every household has its own version yeah. of adobo true, it's not true. even just regional anymore it's like every household oh. every mom will have their own adobo and it's everyone's favorite adobo you know what i mean so i mean it's your mom is always your favorite your mom's food is always your favorite so it's a little bit hard to have some sort of like standard of what pinoy food should be because every region has different food every household within that region has different food. There are certain things in Manila that I didn't know existed until I dated someone from Mindanao. And I would go to a family function and I'd be like, what is this? I've never had this before. You know, so even within us, parang, I think for us, we really need to discover our own country and our own cuisine uh, so that, and. I think with Rina, I'm trying to do a little bit of that. Like the things that I've discovered, uh -huh. I'm trying to put it in here so it's not just the same dishes all the time. Because foreigners who have had Filipino food before, always two questions they always ask uh -huh. me. Do you have lumpia? Do you have pancit? And I'm halo, like, halo. no. Or halo-halo. Uh -huh. And I'm like, no, I don't. Uh -huh. 
Halo Halo Why it uh. doesn't resonate with me. I'm it's not my favorite. So I'm not really going to make it. Uh, uh. I have met Minatamis Nakamote for dessert for instance. Uh, uh, so uh. something that I like I'll uh, make, something that uh. I grew up loving to eat I'll make. Uh. Um, or I don't make lumpia because every other Asian restaurant has their version of spring rolls, so I don't want to make it. How about sisi? I do make sisig, actually. Oh, okay. I don't have it on the menu right now. I will uh, next week. Uh, so right now, because I have the pig heads, the crispy pig heads, uh, so I'm not uh, putting the sisig. But uh, next week, oh, yun din pala, they love sisig. Uh, uh, for, so, foreigners, yes. yes. Foreigners oh, love oh, the sisig. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, but they love the sisig. Oh, oh. Actually, one of the food sites here, it's called Le Fooding. It's like parang the food site here that reviews restaurants and stuff like that. They uh, they mentioned sisig. Uh, they mentioned the sisig. Wow, so may potential ang sisig to be uh, no, yeah, totally. identified with Filipino cuisine. Totally, no? yeah. Oh. There you go. So this is our crispy olo. Uh -huh. It comes with non sauce uh -huh. on it. So. So it's like lit lechon, lechon in the Philippines, no? Lechon in the Philippines, there's a that. lot of variety on it inside, so yes. Okay. So guys, our crispy olo. So we eat this with fingers, same thing in the Philippines that we do. So the sauce is now ginger. Okay, tikman na natin tong ulo. Yang babo yung babo. Ulo, ulo, ulo. Teka. Lechon daw to eh. Mmm, <laughs> it's Rating. <laughs> oh, yeah, para sa mga marites. Oh. Malaki ang tenga. Malaki ang tenga. Oh. Lalo kayo niyan. Hmm. How did you find this place? This particular place, uh, we like look a lot. <laughs> we're really looking a lot, but um, I had certain requirements. Like I wanted it to be in the 11th around this month, like where we are now. Why? Uh, because the 11th is very dynamic, especially when it comes to the food scene in okay. Paris. Like a lot of the good restaurants and the new restaurants really? are here. Oh. Yeah. That's good to know, huh? Yeah. We didn't know that. Because yeah. our namin pinaka center talaga is around this month uh, one. Like the Doon, center. Parang, parang doon yung pinaka ano. I mean, it's very touristy. Yeah, okay. okay and there are some good places, uh -huh. but a lot of the good places there are like the Michelin expensive because uh -huh. it's really targeted towards tourists. Uh -huh. So if you come to like I would say the 9th, 10th, 11th around this month, you'll uh -huh. get a lot of like really good local spots uh -huh. Uh -huh. that are like I think if you have more time in Paris, uh -huh. like if you have more than a few days, you really should get off the tourist track uh -huh. and try like what we eat here, oh, oh, you know, like what people who live here eat, because we don't go to those places. Uh, very touristy, you know? Yeah, right? like I oh. went before when I didn't live here yet, oh, oh, oh. or when I first moved here, but now it's like I can't remember the last time oh. I ate in... I, I can't remember the last time, one, I went to Champs Elysees. Uh -huh. I can't remember the last time I crossed the Seine to go <laughs> to the other side. Like, uh -huh. it's... Uh -huh. Parang once you find your rhythm here, you kind of oh. stay in your... Oh. I guess it's the same as Manila, no? True, Anywhere you true. live, oh. diba? Yeah. Parang ganon. Oh. So, you know, like, I always tell people that, they're like, you know, if you have three days, okay, you do all the tourist stuff, especially oh. if it's your first time. Oh. But then, if you have time beyond that, oh. you really should, you know, like, ask a friend who lives here, kunwari, like, where should I go? Oh. Because our answers are going to be very different from <laughs> what you read online. Uh. How, how difficult is it to put up a business like this in Paris? Uh, it's, very hard. <laughs> Very hard? Uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of, um, like from start to finish, uh, from the uh, time we found the place and signed, like uh, the Promise the Vant. Basically, Promise the Vant is like a, for the guy who owned it to promise that he won't try to sell it to someone else. Like, this is ours. It's uh, like held for us. Uh, and it's given, we're given like three months to get like loan from the bank or whatever that we need. So that took about three months, three or four months. Uh, and then we signed, finally we got a bank loan. And after that, we got the keys to the place in December and we started doing renovations in February and then we opened in May. So it uh, took a full 11 months from start to finish uh, for us to to open. Uh, so I, I, I'm i not sure actually how it is in the Philippines uh, because uh, I've never opened a business there uh, but I feel like it's a lot quicker. Uh, <laughs> here? No, there. There. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
And more expensive here, of course. More expensive here. We really had to figure out where we were going to put our resources. You know, like there were a lot of uh, compromises I had to make in terms of like, I wanted Gunwari something. And our architect's like, okay, you want this? This is how much it's gonna cost. If we do this, you can't do this. And something that I needed to do, like that was more technical, of course, is more important. So basically I told him, okay, Tell me all the technical stuff that needs to be done, uh, no neg non-negotiable, uh, and then tell me how much we have left to play around with. So, uh, in the end, I was very happy with how everything turned uh, out. Uh, si Jim, ba nakapunta na rito? No. No, not yet. I, no, I keep telling. Oh, oh, wow. I know, isn't that ironic? Like, Jim Paredes, punta ka rito. Not oh. been here yet. And the oh. other day on Facebook, he goes, oh, I have to wait till next year to try my daughter's food. I'm like, I next year? My mom came though. Ah, okay. My okay. mom came when we opened and she was uh, here for two and a half months to like, just really help out with anything. Uh, uh, and then uh, my brother, who also lives in Australia, surprised uh, me. Uh, 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 we were open now, but he surprised me and came for nine days with his girlfriend. So that was nice. <laughs> Hopefully my sister and my dad get to come soon. Uh, uh, oh. I'm just waiting for them. But my sister, I can forgive. She has two kids below the age of five, so okay. And she lives uh, in Australia, but my uh, dad has no excuse. Uh, ano yung uh, memories mo of your childhood? Ano yung favorite Apo song mo? Ah, Batang Bata, because he wrote it for me. <laughs> oh, nga. no? Really? Wow, tell us about that. How? <laughs> What's the story oh, behind that? Come on, tell us. Uh, yeah, no, maganda. Okay. What's the story? Well, he told me I was about <clears throat> four or five days old. Mm -hmm. And he hadn't like carried me. He was so afraid to like carry me because I was so small and he was Were you the panganay? Yes. Ah, okay. New dad, he was only in his 20s and I was this tiny baby and he, uh, said, he said it was, he was terrified. Uh, and then one day, one day he said he just like looked at me or carried me or something like that. And mm -hmm. he just sat. I've seen my dad write songs and he's yeah. very like, if he gets inspired, he'll just sit and write it in like two hours, it's done. Uh, or at uh, least he has the basic, you know, like melody and everything already. So I could imagine him, knowing him now, could imagine him at that age just sitting down and writing it. Writing the melody, writing the lyrics, and then, and then yun, I, and I, I, it became super uh -oh. popular. Uh -oh. <laughs> so it, it's kind of like trivia, he wrote it for oh, me. Oh, wow! Hey, sing a few lines. No, I, no, no, no. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Singer. <laughs> Pero yung lyrics ng song talks about uh, an, older an older kid na ad adolescent, no? Yeah. Parang, may, may mga issues between the father and, yeah. the, and the child. Bakit ganun ang... <laughs> Maybe he knew already. <laughs> he foresaw the future. Oh. I was diba? the rebelde in the family. Eh? So, oh, oh. <laughs> he saw it already. Oh, from oh. The Prophetic, ano? Rebels Prophetic yung song. Yeah. Oh. But aside from that, my other favorite Apo song is Panalangin. Mm, ah, ah, Even my daughter, ah, my, uh, my daughter's favorite song also, and she memorizes it. Ah, 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 ah. And he sings that at home. Pag pag kayo kayo lang garon. Meron ba mga times na garon that your dad would sing for you? Well, a lot of the time when our family would all be together, because uh -huh. all his brothers and sisters love to sing, uh -huh. they end up singing the songs they grew up mm -hmm. listening to, like the uh -huh. Beatles and stuff like that, uh -huh. more than like Apo songs. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, my dad. Mm -hmm. People think, ah, oh, your dad's celebrity. Ganyan. He's the most simple person you'll ever meet. When it comes to food, uh -oh, uh -oh. oh my God, kailangan may kanin. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Like sometimes, okay, they come here and I take them to a nice restaurant. I take uh -oh. them to a, I used to work in a Michelin restaurant. And then oh, when wow. I wasn't working there anymore, I brought them there. Uh -oh. So I was like, oh my God, this is so good, this is so good. But then after, parang like an hour after, he's, but he's still hungry. It's not a meal for him kung walang kanin. Pwede <laughs> tumataba, <laughs> huh? He works out, so oh, he's very proud that he can do like 100 push-ups pa rin. He's oh. like 71 now, I think, my dad. I know he likes tortang talong and uh -huh. I know he likes adobo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He makes adobo, it's the only dish he can make. My mom taught me taught my dad how to make adobo. Uh -huh. So so sometimes when he feels like it, he's like, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna cook for everyone and we know it's gonna be adobo. Uh -huh. The thing is, he makes a big pot like this that lasts huh? like a whole week. Wow! <laughs> and oh. Uh -huh. so, yeah, but my dad honestly is super simple. Uh, uh, uh. Like he's not super picky with food uh, uh, uh. and stuff like that. That's why with him, when I cook for him, he's like, ah, Sarap, this is the best ever. Parang I'm like, I don't believe you. You'll say everything that I make is sarap. You don't want But as a family, we do um, we do like to eat out, but. Uh. 
I think because we all live apart, like they live in the Philippines and Australia, my uh -huh. brother and sister live in Australia, I live here, uh -huh. that when we're together, we like to eat at home a lot. Uh -huh. Like and cook together uh -huh. and, and stuff uh -huh. because, well, now lately it's me cooking. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm on vacation, I shouldn't be cooking. Uh -huh. <laughs> to be fair, my mom cooks for me. Uh -huh. Uh, I hope you guys come. Well, first come to Paris. It's a beautiful city. There's lots to see. And if you do end up finding yourself here, uh, come to Reina. It's uh, one of the very few Filipino restaurants that you'll be able to find in Paris. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if you do come here, come say hi <laughs> at the pass. I'm very friendly. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. See you. Subscribe to this channel, like our videos, and post your comments below. And always hit the notification bell.